Welcome everybody back to the hole in the world, an actual play of the Monty Cook Games' Invisible Sun RPG. I am, as always, uh, your uh, hostess with the mostess, uh, Zach, otherwise known as Great Zamino. I use uh, he, him uh, pronouns, and I am joined once again uh, by my lovely cast members after, um, sorry, we were uh, gone last uh, two weeks ago, just uh, wasn't feeling very well. There might be a little bit of a noticeable husk to my voice, but I'm feeling much better. Uh, and with that uh, out of the way, uh, Marcy, if you'd like to start us off. Hello, it's me. I'm Marcy still, aka Experimental Madness, which is still the name you can find me most places around the internet, except for Twitter, where I'm determined to remain the permanent resident cryptid on there, which is now becoming my brand, which I'm fine with. Um, I am back playing Gabrielle Kazan, the iconoclastic ardent apostate who hosts a choir. Awesome. Moving down the uh, overlay, Bill, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Bill. You can find me on Discord under the handle at Ghostbike. And today I am drinking a Sicilian red. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, different stream. Uh, I'm playing Maurice Webb, a stalwart <laughs> empath of the Order of Weavers who turns tales into reality. Excellent. Moving over to the other side. Hopper, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Um, what's up? That's me. I'm Hopper. You've been warned. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm Hopper. I'm a professional arborist and GM based out of Brooklyn, New York. I use they, them pronouns, as does my character, who I will characters. I don't know how many of them there are. I'm becoming concerned. It's all um, characters all the way down. And that's, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm playing Twig, the mendicant gallant apostate who heralds beginnings. Awesome. And finally, last but not least, Marissa, if you'd like to introduce yourself today. Hello, everyone. My name is Marissa. She, her pronouns, also known as Critical Kitten here and there on the internet. Uh, and I play Kiri von Hollingsworth, the first assistant librarian of the Order of the Vance. She is an aromatic stoic who understands the words, guardian of Zaleska's Grimoire, curator of King Nine's library, and witness to strange sights in glass trees. Um, last time, Kiri was in the valise and apparently discovered a an enemy library so we uh we'll see what impact that may have had excellent and uh so uh without further ado let me go ahead and give us our recap as soon as i uh put on a little bit of familiar music for most folks who've been listening for forever one moment go okay let me see uh i promise it's on the yeah there it is okay Previously, on The Hole in the World, with Kiri taking Gabrielle's place in the extra-dimensional valise to investigate the library she found, the rest of the Vizlay concluded their business in the Silver Sun. Heading to the workshop of the Sterling, Varuna Shaker, Twig installed an artificial heart into their chest while Gabrielle and Maurice requested an upgrade to their sniper rifle and a custom spider silk suit, respectively. Try saying that ten times fast. With the suit made to uh, Maurice's specifications, his fitting of it triggered an angry barking fit from Duncan and a flash of memory on the part of the weaver. Packing it away, Maurice shipped it with an additional message to his father in the night side of the Silver Sun. While Gabrielle picked up their commissioned, uh, her commissioned orders uh, for uh, circlets of mental shielding. After one final heart to heart, with Gabrielle's parents, the Vizlay prepared to depart for the Golden Sun to investigate further Vespertine operations. Maurice entered the valise to find Kiri, but found instead a full-length mirror blocking his path, with Gabrielle and Twig on the outside, none the wiser. And it's at this moment that we are going to pick back up where we left off. First, I need to change the music. So, what's everybody doing? Well, I think Kiri has been investigating the Vespertines library. Um, so, 
What she's gotten up to down there, I don't know. All we know is that she uh, went mysteriously out of contact. So maybe we should find out why. Absolutely. So you have spent the better part of the day investigating this library, and it's almost dreamlike in the process that you have found yourself in the heart of this um, this kind of ancillary facility within this extramental space. You, I think, were driven there because I think at various intervals, as you were kind of like taking in Gabrielle's handiwork in this central meeting area, um, leading off to one of these kind of like arteries within the extra dimensional space, um, you found yourself guided. And, you know, Ga Gabrielle had very kind of clearly demarcated uh, a sigil of sorts for you, a, a wide open book. Um, to kind of point you towards uh, what would ostensibly become your quarters within this um, library, in this uh, facility. But you found yourself guided there, just kind of navigating around, almost drawn by bouncing light, uh, like the sheen finding it kind of traveling down the walls, uh, as it were. And I think piqued by that interest, you found yourself in a fairly small modest library, not uh, at all similar to the libraries that you have uh, grown accustomed to on the Vancean campus. Instead, it seems like a very small selection of periodicals and uh, scholarly treatises. There's a very simple, like, medium-sized uh, desk table uh, wherein somebody could, um, you know, pour over these volumes, but at the same time, uh, there is kind of like this reading lamp, very much in that kind of tinted green style that um, it seems like whoever left it uh, had left the light on. Um, if you'd like to kind of get an idea of what you saw in this uh, library, I would love for you to make me a uh, perception roll. I would be delighted to. Um... We'll just do this. Well, not with that die. We will do this straight. Okay. That's a five. Okay. On a five, the thing that notice you notice about all of these uh, kind of volumes and periodicals is they seem to be a kind of a, a collection of current events, but uh, mostly they seem to be almost like encyclopedic treatises and um, things like kind of like geographical surveys and you realize even with that five uh, that all of them are uh, pointing towards the kind of like the golden sun uh, basically uh, they seem to be you know encyclopedic entries um, you know ideas of kind of like travelers guides uh, they seem to be doing a lot of field research for whatever is kind of transpiring um, it takes the better part of the day kind of perusing the volumes that are available, but you do find one, uh, and I think really at this point, you do find one entry that seems to be kind of like demarcated and kind of highlighted uh, separately from the rest. Um, and I am going to send that to you in chat. While we are... While I send you this, um, I'm just going to, I think at this point, you do hear um, Maurice's voice uh, calling for you. Because um, it is take, you you have that like um, unmistakable feeling of being inside the li uh, a library and t it taking way too much time, time passing uh, so quickly you barely notice it. Um, but at the same time, within this facility, you have no idea how much time has passed. Um, but you hear kind of uh, Maurice kind of calling that kind of signal, looking to trying to check and make sure that you are okay. Um, my question is, would you kind of absentmindedly knock back uh, or would you be too distracted? I think if she heard Maurice calling for her, she would like she she has a a 
an abundance of cantrips that allow her to keep her place in various books that she's reading that allow her to uh, shelve and instantly find her place or like, you know, flip through the pages of a book with ease to find something she's looking for. Um, so I think she will like make liberal use of those and then go to go towards Maurice or where she hears Maurice's voice coming from. And there's a very strange kind of moment where for a bit, the voice seems um, a little muffled. It gets clearer and then it gets muffled again. Um, and as you're kind of like holding this one volume in this kind of marked volume in hand, um, you are looking down the hallway uh, in which you uh, would typically have entered this uh, separate library. But instead, there seems to be in front of you a full length mirror. And your reflection is mirroring you and kind of like looking back um, in much the same manner that uh, you are studying. What do you do? I think she recoils instantly, uh, not expecting to encounter a mirror. Is this is this a standard mirror or is it especially elaborate in some way? I, I would say it is elaborate in that... Um, Actually, you know what? Make me a uh, perception check. Gladly. That is a seven. On a seven, the thing that you notice about this that is incredibly strange is you realize that you have seen the framing before. And what little time you had spent at your family's estate, at the Von Hollingsworth estate, you recognize some of the framing on portraits and pictures. It's very much in a very similar, almost kind of Rococo style uh, that is very reminiscent of kind of the um, uh, the tastes of uh, reputedly your family over the years. And that's the immediate thing that you pick up from this ornate mirror, other than the fact that it almost reaches from floor to ceiling. I think she locks eyes with her reflection in the mirror, almost like she could freeze it in place, that as long as she holds its gaze, it's not a danger to anyone. And I think as she does that, she calls, Maurice? Maurice, you hear uh, on the other side of this mirror, uh, looking uh, with this reflection looking back at you, you hear uh, Kiri calling for you. And I've just been kind of uh, lot, uh, directed down a hallway. You've been like, you felt something pursuing you as like these kind of beams of light seem to be bouncing. Uh, and you felt something reach uh, almost in the air above your head and uh, and flick past you. Right, right. Did I, what was it my shadow? You can make me a perception roll. I'd like to make a perception roll. Um, you get a perception roll, and you get a perception roll, and you get a perception roll. Okay. Um, this seems important. I'm going to spend three because okay. I can do that. That's an eleven. All right. On wow. Okay. On an eleven, you get the sense that the moment, like this light, was kind of bouncing around, and it was trying to catch you, uh, seemingly, or it was kind of trying to at least kind of catch your eye. Um, but it seems to have almost like stopped and hovered in uh, one corner of one of the parts of this hallway, uh, very unnaturally so, as almost as if in response to Kiri's voice. Interesting. Um, and can I see any mirrors at this moment? Um, yeah, they're, they're, you're everywhere, everywhere. Your everywhere. reflection yeah, yeah, yeah. is staring at you. Um, the first thing he does is he scoops up Duncan in his arms. Duncan, and... Duncan is outside of the valise, right? Oh, now. he is. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So Maurice, um, does the same weave that he did to turn twig invisible. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, bends a slide around him and sees what changes in his environment and shouts out, uh, Carrie, things aren't good. The reflection has, your reflection after casting this weave has left all of the mirrors. Um, and uh, 
except for one, which is this very large full length mirror that seems to be uh, the on the other side of which uh, you can hear Kiri's voice calling out. Um, your reflection uh, hasn't left and it seems to be still mirroring your movements even invisibly. Oh no, I hate that. But one thing that does strike you is it's cocked an eyebrow at you. This mm. reflection. Um, let's see, um, Maurice, as he's kind of like dodging around, seeing if this, how this reflection mirrors his movements, which it does, uh, I'm, I'm taking, um, kind of uh, pats his pockets, like what does he have on him? Um, and I think not finding anything, he's going to use a forte ability to uh, call an object from metaphor. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to um, I think he's going to um, reach down and pull out a silver bullet Ooh. from his pocket. Okay. And make this face and say, I hope this works. And he chucks it at the mirror. All right. Give me an accuracy throw. And okay. But I will tell you, as you do this, um, you see your reflection hold up a finger, looking at you, going, oh, wagging oh, the oh, finger at you. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and you, you, are you still going to, as you do this, are you still like mid throw? Uh, yeah. I, I, I follow through. Yeah. Uh, give me an accuracy roll. This okay. is just to see how hard you throw it. Uh huh. That is a six plus two, eight. Okay. Um, you see, uh, the, a spider web crack fracture, uh, in the mirror as you just hear the sound of that cracking glass, uh, as the grand kind of like mirror, um, uh, I think, uh, uh, you, I think the bullet kind of bounces off uh, and it kind of looks at the point of impact on the mirror, your reflection, before kind of meeting your eyes back again. And once again, uh, the eye, uh, the eyes kind of like the eyebrows waggle at you a little bit. And uh, a smile plays on the corner of uh, the reflection's lips. And Mar Maurice uh, just looks at that reflection and goes, I'm going to deal with you later. Kiri, there's mirrors. We got to get out of here. <laughs> uh, and as you do that, um, I will say this. The light um, that was in the corner throws itself at the mirror and it bounces off of the reflection in one big fell uh, uh, kind of like, mo not motion, it's... Uh, to describe this, it's just like a blinding flash. And on the other side, um, Kiri, you also see this blinding flash. Uh, both of you, if you'd like, can make me perception rolls uh, as uh, this flash kind of occurs uh, before your eyes. That's a nine on the die. Didn't spend any penny, though. Okay. Uh, it's six on a die plus one is seven. Okay. So I will say this with the nine. The thing that you notice uh, as uh, this light kind of like, I think you managed to avert your eyes in time and to cover uh, part of your eyes uh, as, and kind of get a glance in as uh, it seems like this massive mirror uh, dissipates, almost kind of like disapparating uh, into particles and uh, seems to vanish from sight. And when you kind of like your gaze adjusts, the hallway is no longer blocked, and the mirrors on either sides of the hallway have also similarly disappeared. And you are left uh, looking at uh, Kiri, standing in a library, holding what appears to be uh, an encyclopedia. What does Kiri look like in this moment? That is she a looks. Yeah. She looks like a reflection of herself. In a way, 
I think she had been holding the gaze of her own reflection for so long that I think she forgot for a moment who she was, that she was not, after all, the person on the other side of the mirror, but herself. So she looks a little stricken. And Maurice kind of cocks his head a little bit, seeing this kind of faraway look in her eyes, and then um, reaches out a hand and just says, hi, are you here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened? Uh, Mirrors, we gotta go, like, right now. And he grabs her hand and pulls her toward to leave. Well, yeah, but, but the books, the, uh, there's more. Oh, they'll be there. Uh, mirrors first. I suppose. Uh, it, and now have, uh, I'm moving towards the area where, like, I just entered. Is the mirrors, are they still operating? Are they reforming? No. Did it look? They, okay. They seem to have completely fled all of the surfaces of the walls. Uh, you are just kind of left in this liminal space with Kiri as you've kind of grabbed her and are, 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 I'm assuming, pulling her back to the entrance. Yeah, you know, not getting very far, I think, yeah. with this resistance. All right. Has, has the mirror with the familiar trim gone as well? Yes. Uh, after the flash kind of left, you realize that the pathway uh, it was blocking is unblocked and the mirror has disappeared. I'd like to think that you were responsible for the mirrors disappearing, but I doubt we're that lucky. Yeah, let's analyze this later, sweetheart. I love you. We gotta go. Um, <laughs> excellent. As this, uh, as you kind of uh, uh, pull yourselves uh, towards the entrance, we're gonna go ahead and flip onto the outside. Twig, Gabrielle, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I think that Gav is probably setting up for this Pathwalker spell, which is, I believe, how we ended the, the last episode where we were about to, to perform this spell. Yeah. Granted, I, it's been a month and my brain is mush, but <laughs> Gav would know what's happening. <laughs> I, I, I will say that um, at one point earlier, uh, it, before the casting of it, um, Duncan was barking wildly and madly. Uh, at the valise uh, after um, Maurice had descended down into it, um, but has since kind of like stopped and is just emitting like a low growl um, at the uh, 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 kind of like this closed suitcase. Um, while is that is saying anything more complicated than barking in a bag, that is the thing that is very um, uh, disconcerting is you heard it. Uh, you heard Duncan saying, Dad, oh, Dad, uh, yelling, and then it just kind of, like, turns into yelling uh, in terms of, like, in dog speak, just barking. Um, and so, then, like, the cat's outside of the room? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, I will say this. Um, one thing that you receive prior to casting this uh, spell, Gabrielle, as you're kind of making your final preparations, you have received a very long package um, that you suspect is from uh, the Sterling. However, in addition, there is a tiny package, uh, relatively small, that has also been left for you. Wait, wait, wait. For me? Who or... dropped this off? What now? Who dropped this off? Uh, this has been uh, dropped off within the diplomatic suites of uh, the uh, palace. Gotcha. So uh, I imagine this was actually left by uh, Akarian, uh, the, uh, the the angelic guide you guys have been working with. Are both packages for me or? Yes. They're both for me. Both oh. of them are for you. Hmm. Um, I'll open them real quick. Just because I feel like it'd be funny if I just chucked them into the suitcase <laughs> and have it land on both of you. <laughs> So which package do you start with? The big one or the small one? I'll, I'll do the small one first. Okay. Let me see if I can change Make them. a death save. <laughs> Make a death save. Uh, you take 20 d10 necrotic damage. Uh, hmm. let, me, let me see if I can find the right. Okay. So 
as you open this package, there is a small handwritten note in a beautiful cursive script, very lovingly made. And the note reads, so, no, so that no matter where you go, you may f remember where you came from. Uh, and you realize it's written in Hebrew. Your loving mother. And what is it? It is the blanket that Kieran Von Milis <laughs> made for Gabrielle <laughs> and for Mont. Good. Um, yeah, and now Gav knows who's responsible for those things because she was there when it was being made. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to... Gav, Gav is, uh, not, was not expecting that, so she's just looking at it and, like, you know, moving the blanket around between her fingers in her hands for uh, a second before she folds it down like it was in a small package so like how roughly how big is this could i fit it in my pack uh that is a question for um the player of kieran von milas this, this is this is a blanket for an infant so i'll I'd take that as a yes i could probably fold it down and put it in my my pack yeah. Um, which Gap will do. Um, you know, while uh, <laughs> clearing your throat, you know, <laughs> no time for emotions. Not here. Not ever. Um, before she's uh, going to open up the, the bigger package. Uh, as you open up the bigger package, uh, I imagine that you're doing this right by a window. And the light of the silver sun catches and bounces back off of it, kind of almost, I think, just kind of shimmering and catching the glow um, cinematically across your eyes as you open the box and you realize it is your modified sniper rifle. The adjustments that you uh, made per... Um, your request to the Sterling to Varuna. Um, and he has latticed together, you know, this bolt action rifle with this almost like it seems to move this kind of silver, uh, um, almost pearlescent metal uh, that I think just as it kind of like the sunlight plays off of it, it shimmers. And, um, my question is, do you immediately pick it up? What do you do? Oh, hell yeah, I picked that thing up. As My baby looks good. As you pick it up, um, you see uh, where the scope is. You see your halo fly out to ring over the top. Uh, and it almost seems to be floating, hovering over the scope. Uh, and kind of like bending and twisting and turning around it gyroscopically. You are now in possession of a sainted sniper rifle. As an action, you may send your halo to seek out a target or enemy and illuminate them. As long as the halo illuminates them, you are able to discern their location even behind heavy cover no more than five feet in thickness. While illuminated, your ranged attacks against the designated target are made with plus two. Cool. That's awesome. I'm normal about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think she, she lets out a low whistle and is just like, this, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but that is the kind of la like the last bits of this care package as uh, you ready for this journey. And I think what a care package. Yeah, I think at this rate, however, at this point, um, the 
lid of the valise flies open and I think leading the way you see Maurice uh, Kiri carrying a book uh, trailing uh, directly behind him Twig just kind of goes ah, and wakes up from a nap <laughs> and goes Gav I, I think that they, the Vesper team must have left some mirrors down there because it's bad in there you, you, you tumble out and she's holding this brand new gun already in her hands and she's just like <laughs> yeah, and it's bad in there. Cool gun. Right? <laughs> but, but wait, 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 wait. There shouldn't be anything left. I got rid of all of the rest of the bugs. Oh, I mean, no, but there's mirrors. So, like, actually, Kiri, can they, you close that real quick? They we'll talk about the mirrors. There weren't any mirrors when I was in there last time. I if mean, there are mirrors in there now, that's new. There could have, you might have missed one. Do I miss... When I hit anything, have you have you ever known me to miss a shot? Finding hidden mirrors is not shooting things, Gav. What's the point of a hidden mirror? I'll ask you this question, Zach, because we, we didn't ever play this on camera. So when I was down there, did Gav see any mirrors? Make me a perception roll. Yep. Oh, God. Yeah, a little flashback. Come on, character sheet. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a two, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, Memory not, sucks. Not that you can think of. However, I will say that you just remember there was, like, your eye caught a little bit of light down the path where you found the library. You, you okay. think that, like, you just remember seeing, like, something out of the corner of your eye, maybe, like, a, a brief shimmer. You don't remember seeing any mirrors, though. Look, if there are mirrors there, what do you, why don't you just go in there and break them? Well, I mean, I'm not even sure what the correct strategy is. He turns to Kiri and says, are, are you okay? When did you first notice something was off? I was reading, as you might expect. I... Not until you shouted, actually. So it could but, have been a long time for them to metastasize. I mean, they were, I don't know if you saw on your way out, they were all over. There was one, though. It had the trim of my family. It seemed like it had a message for me. What that was, I don't know. We <laughs> dispensed with them, at least for the time being, before I could find out. Maybe that's for the best. That's interesting. I also saw, I, I weaved myself invisible, paranoid about the mirrors, and one of my reflections remained that it also seemed like it had a message for me. Is that, and he looks around to everyone, is that how mirrors work here? Does anybody know more than me, which is nothing? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go out on the limb and say you probably shouldn't be listening to anything any of the mirrors have to say to you because you shouldn't be talking to them. Good point. So do we have to throw away this valise now? No, I spent too much time trying to make something that we could use on the go. What do you do with a valise that's lousy with mirrors? Well, what do we, it sounds like you have a, a mirror curse or whatever it is. Can't you just consider like the curse? Seems reflect on it. I will shoot you with this new gun. I need the target practice. Don't Twig, push your luck. Twig, Twig, Twig finally stands up and just kind of like uh, totters over. And... <laughs> Seriously though, what is that's not that's that's they, people were talking about that that we the mirror virus thing, right? What does it actually do? Does it turn you into a mirror? Does it make mirrors into things? They take over mirrors. I mean, that's what a virus does. They spread. That's what they're good at. And then suddenly you're living in a world where all you see is your own reflection. By that point, you're too far gone to be able to do much about it, except try to find your way out through the dark behind the looking glass, as it were. There are stories of people who get exchanged. The, the mirror version takes over and they're stuck forever. But I don't know if those are true. Thanks, I hate that. Not a fan either. Well, so we should throw out the valise. No. Can't we just break them? If it's a virus, then it has, then there's a cure of some kind. 
<sighs> and is the police infected or are one of you? I don't see a mirror on me now. They aren't. Well, the thing about a virus <clears throat> is it's sentient in a way. It has a desire. It wants to continue to grow and spread. It's alive. It has a life. Zach, you can ask oh, it. Do you, do you kill a mirror when you break it? Or do you just make a bunch of little baby mirrors? You're asking me? Uh, I, well, I was going to ask, um, what, can you describe again the nature of those uh, magical items we got? It was to defend against mental yeah. en encroachment. Uh, I will say that you had circlets of mental shielding, uh, which basically uh, give all of you guys flat bonuses to your resistance rolls. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that you do have is uh, basically this kind of like one dispelling ephemera that allows you to uh, basically end an ongoing mental uh, mind control effect mm -hmm. on yourself or an individual. Okay. Would Maurice know enough about mirrors to determine whether using like a mental, do, do mirrors affect you mentally? Make me a uh, magical lore roll. And alternatively, if you can think of a weave that would allow you to divine such information, you oh, may do so. That's an interesting question. Um, I'm out of character. I hate mirrors so much. So I'm mm -hmm. so fascinated to find out how this goes. <laughs> Just which version of terrible is it? Um, I don't think I have anything to weave. Uh, so this would be understanding magic outside of codified magical practices? Yes. Okay, Absolutely. So rolling Absolutely. This is outside codified practices. That is a five. All right. Uh, on a five, I think that what you understand is that you know, I think it's kind of like almost mixed in with the lore and like the short stories that you're familiar with from the gray. But the idea here is that you just know that basically what Kiri has been saying about these things having sentience and a desire, it rings true, particularly uh, from what you understand of like viruses within um, Saturine. Like for instance, you know for a fact that houses can get cancer. Uh, in Saturine. They're very much like living extensions of Vizlay often, or, you know, the individuals that reside in them. Um, so I think it's almost like you think that this virus is not really necessarily like mental in any way, shape, or form, but it seems to be a, like a manifestation or a symptom of some larger kind of rot or, or, um, Maybe rot is the wrong word, but some sort of like larger ailment. So I think Maurice kind of considers what Curie just said and says, and like a virus, they can't be reasoned with. I don't think we're appropriate hosts, but uh, and he looks to Gav and Twig and says, uh, you know, I don't want to infect you. Why don't we just say for right now, nobody go down into the valise. That's a good first step. But if it is infected, then we should bring it somewhere that it could, you know, be cured. It's also a body of literature. I can, I have a theory. I don't know if it's, there's anything to it, but maybe with a little further study, a little further reading, I could call a few books from the Vancian campus. I'm reminded of something a distant bell, perhaps it was Allegra in the Warwa part. There was a, a series of journals, academic journals, but someone who was going through a mirror virus experience. And as you might expect, it got worse and worse with each entry until it seemed like utter nonsense. Perhaps if I could find that document, be able to look at it a little bit more closely, we might learn something. Just a quick question about what we're saving this valise for. It was going to be a nice 
resource for us. But at this point, I think the only thing of value is whatever that you found in the library, Kiri, is that correct? Well, it's, I imagine, a quick getaway if we need one. We... Maybe we can extract what we need and call it a day. Have you even been into your part? Uh, no. Uh, there were mirrors. <laughs> what if we just make a big... big... I don't know what it's called. What's it called when you make a noise that resonates and then the glass breaks. Oh. That's all mirrors are. They're just metal and glass. I mean, that's gray thinking, but I, I still like it. I mean, it's the same concept, isn't it? But isn't that the same thing that you were just worried about? If you break a mirror, do you make many other ones? Mm -hmm. The mirrors want you to break them. The, we saw the light. Do they? That's the light. It, 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 it disapparated the mirror. It didn't make many different ones. It broke it down. It, uh, it, it, it burned it away. If I had to guess, and mind you, it's just a guess, we didn't succeed against the mirrors because we did something to send them away. They wanted to be gone. I don't think this is over. Oh boy. Well, so we're not going back in, right? I wouldn't advise it. Okay. I don't think we should until we have more information. And I can Mar start gathering some. Maurice plops down on the couch and uh, Duncan crawls into his lap and he's like, okay. Well, now that you're all here, then uh, there's no sense in us waiting around for some sort of cure for the police. We should continue on with our mission. Okay. Is We're this bound an appropriate... to the gold sun. Is this an appropriate time to take a 10 minute rest? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I thought I thought you meant a, an actual break for a second. I was like, dog, we just started. <laughs> buddy. <laughs> no. Wait, wait for wait for the break, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While you uh, get, um, mm -hmm. how do we ahead. summon Ocarian? Uh I think uh, a stance. Poke your head out of the door and just yell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Twig, Twig will absolutely just kind of um, uh, tosses the jacket on uh, that they had been, they had rolled up and they were sleeping on um, and uh, just kind of pokes, pokes their head out the door. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Mm. Hey. Oh, you're right there. I'm so sorry. Sorry. I was just uh, in, in, in route. Um, may I help you with something? Uh, yeah. What do you know about mirrors? Hmm. And I'm going to pull a card. Oh, no. Great. The witchcraft begins. Uh, the incriminating skull. Meanings, disaster, discovery, evidence, connections, friends, and family. The skull is uncovered, revealing a long-buried wrong. It is evidence of a crime. However, the skull was once a person, and that person's family and friends missed them. Um, game narrative. Something that should have remained hidden becomes evident. A friendly NPC, particularly one with a bond to the PC, makes an appearance or something happens that suggests a connection with them. Uh, there's a deeper, darker meaning to the matter at hand. It presages failure, particularly being caught at wrongdoing. However, if the context is right, it might also simply indicate that a friend or relative, particularly one that has been long and strange, is involved in some way. Uh, someone discovers something the PC... Okay. The Raven remembers your sins. So, uh, I'm definitely not the secret Raven. And, and Money Cook Games is in the chat, so we can yell directly. Yeah, Monty, <laughs> what if, what sorcery hath you wrought? Um, so uh, I will go ahead and say, um, Ocarian thinks for a moment, and um, um, in what context uh, 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 would you desire such information? Like, just a little bit of discretion, you know, but like, say somebody had a little bit of a, a, mir a mirror issue in a uh, private space. Well, um, assuming that we are referring to a uh, virus of some sort, um, I think that ostensibly it could be treated like any other illness, any other um, 
uh, a malady, as it were, uh, similar to how one might uh, uh, perhaps uh, treat I think an infestation. Twig is just gonna kind of just gently grab Ocarian by the back of like the shirt and just slowly guide him into the room <laughs> as this statement is being made and then eventually just steer him in front as he continues talking. Yeah, and I think he's kind of like just like thinking kind of like and just kind of is barely aware of you kind of steering him in at which point, oh, you're all here. Um, yes, is there a problem with mirrors? Something I can address or help? Apparently there's mirrors in the valise. Do the two of you that have actually experienced them wish to give us some more? Um, yeah, I, um, I mean, my vote's still to just get rid of it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if we wanted to cleanse this, uh, extra dimensional space of mirrors, do you know of a way to do it? Well, um, there are a great many healing magics and, uh, means of renewal available to us within, uh, of course, uh, the Silver Sun. Um, perhaps I might look at, uh, uh, perhaps uh, 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 using some of the healing waters of uh, the glistening expanse, perhaps. Um, this is something that I could undertake if you wish to leave the lease with me. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, we can just try to ascertain. I could even perhaps ask the Sterling to investigate. Marie shrugs. I mean, we, we could leave it. If we, if we need to. And what little I did see, Gav, looked really nice, so I am sorry. Uh, and I think at this point, um, you see Akarian's been looking at all of you um, with his two owl uh, eyes in his uh, owl, on his owl head, at which point he says, well, give me a moment, actually. And he opens the third eye that has been closed in his forehead uh, and seems to just be looking very um, deeply at this valise. And at which point he says, does one of you mind opening it for me? I think Maurice um, kind of gestures to Kiri. Kiri nods. And when you're ready. Uh, certainly, yes. Go ahead. I think she pulls the valise open. And as you do, um, you just see this eye begin to glow brighter and brighter until it is suffusing the stairway down into the valise with uh, this silver light. And he kind of steps forward uh, and begins uh, kind of descending the stairwell and then looks around the corner and looks and begins kind of um, just craning his neck around, at which point um, he turns and uh, looks back up and says, I see no evidence of anything that has might cause any kind of alarm in my third eye. No auras, no uh, misalignments of spirit, no ailment. There's a great uh, deal of changing magic here, that of the gold sun. I feel I, like uh, Gav might stick her head into the police temporarily be like, wait, do you not see any mirrors? Because I didn't see any either when I was down there. Uh, at which point, would you like me to continue investigating? Maurice says, I, I have an idea. When I was down there, I, I saw a light. Maybe your silver light's washing it out. Very well. And... Um, the eye closes, uh, and he begins taking more steps down. And then a few seconds pass. The gang kills a carrion. And then a few more. And then about a minute passes. Should we go in? Oh God, we've killed him. <laughs> No, there's nothing here, I don't think. And you just see um, the uh, form of a carrion familiar once again, kind of beginning to ascend up the stairwell. I don't see anything. No light. One second. Gav is going to go down there just real fast. Right. Do I see any mirrors? Make me a perception roll. 
can I do a better job than last one? You may uh, use their enhancement if you like. Yeah, I, I am going to. So that'll bump my six up to a seven. Maurice follows. Yeah, as you are uh, descending with a seven, uh, Maurice, go ahead and give me a perception roll as well. Okie dokie. Three. Okay. Uh, with a seven and a three. And uh, I will note that with the seed of truth, um, Gavrielle. <laughs> That's right about that. <laughs> There doesn't seem to be anything hiding or invisible from you or or kind of obfuscated with like illusory magic. Neither of you see any trace of this light. There's nothing here. Well, Was this a prank? there isn't. No, you know I hate jokes. And then he starts giggling and he's like, no, but I'm serious about this. So Think. there's, you saw them when you were walking down just littered with mirrors. Kiri was behind a mirror. I broke, I didn't break it. The light broke it. The light disappeared it. And she was. How does light break a mirror? Buddy, I wish I knew. Actually, um, Maurice, make me a uh, one more magical lore roll. And actually, um, Kiri, you can do the same. I'm going to start a legit. That's a re-roll. Both sixes plus one seven. Okay. Eight. Okay. Uh, I think both of you, it occurs to you that maybe the light is a property of these mirrors, as in it seems to be a way of their manifestation. With an eight, however, Kiri, you realize that the light guided you where you wanted to, where uh, to the point of most interest to you. In fact, as you think about it, the light fell on the volume that you are now carrying. Hmm. It's interesting, isn't it, that light is so integral to mirrors. After all, it's what allows us to see ourselves in them. It's what allows reflection. But light is not inherently good or bad. It just illuminates. It is a property. In this case, and I think she pulls open, you know, the volume that she was looking at, the light was bringing my attention toward this passage on Elderbrand. It's a passage about how Elderbrand are often found or can be found in the gold, and how many people don't think about Elderbrand, or they think of them as being absences, empty spaces. But actually, when it comes to it, though they may not have human qualities like drive and ambition, Elder Bryn are interested in changing themselves, not the world around them. And that humans only see the context, Elder Bryn in the context of living in and on the fringes of our society. It seems there's a lot we don't know about Elder Bryn. What does this have to do with the mirrors and the beliefs? I don't know. How does the light want something? I told you, a virus is sentient. It has, it can have so the light desire. The mirrors, which in the mirrors are a virus. Can it not be both at once? Well, Why as I... would it break itself? That is a more interesting question. In I told such you... a time that we could answer that question, I'm going to get us ready to get to cold before any of our leads run cold. And we'll, we'll get stay out of the valise. Sure. Okay. And I think Gap will, will march back up the steps. Okay. Are you all following suit? Are you taking the valise or are you leaving it behind? Um. I think Yuri would say, you know, I don't think this is a lost cause. It may be an infestation, perhaps, but... If there's no mirrors there now, 
My hypothesis is that they went away not because we made them, but because they chose to. It means we have a deeper issue here, one that's not just about cleansing the police. It's about figuring out what the mirrors want with us. I hate that. I'll hate it all you might, but I think it's going to take a little bit of research. And her eyes light up as she says the word research. Okay. Maurice can't help but smile at this and says, um, well, maybe the mirrors were pointing us to the golden sun. That could be both good and ill, but it seems it's clear that that's where our path lies. And Gav is going to get started on that spell to take us to gold. Excellent. So you start the workings of this spell. Now, you are casting a color door, which is basically a pathwalker. Oh, and I thought I was doing pathwalker. Well, pathwalker would be moving adjacent. Color door takes you to the color that you want to go to. Oh, okay. Yeah. The only thing about this, so, you know, it's a pathwalker spell that you have learned uh, from your mother. And it will open a door to whichever sun you want to go to, whichever color. However, it will drop you in a random place. That said, as you are casting the spell, what are you doing to kind of exert your will on it? What does this look like? Um, excellent question, considering I've never ever cast something like this before. Um, I actually think she like runs a hand through her hair feathers and pulls out uh, a yellow feather because she's got an array of multicolored feathers and she's going to use it kind of like you one would a quill uh, and start using that as like the basis to like start in drawing this massive like circular uh, portal. Um, and I think as just like it sort of speeds up that yellow feather starts rotating like at a faster rate than you know would be humanly possible to do so that as the light's catching it it is starting to turn golden mm -hmm. um and i think she's never been to the golden sun so there's no way to exert any form of will on a specific location mm -hmm. so i think it's more just like flat surface flat surface flat surface no lava no water <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as you do, as this spins, you see a golden door appear in front of you. Uh, this frame, I think that with your mother's casting of uh, this, the doors that she has opened before to walk the path, they have been fairly ornate or fairly evocative. Um, but this is, because this is your first casting, because this is something you are trying to will into being for the first time, um, the door itself uh, is uh, very much kind of like rudimentary, very basic in function, almost like kind of like a steel door uh, that you would use to like open a bunker. And uh, it is very gold in color. And it appears before all of you. You have only a few seconds to uh, go through. So, in that said, in that time, all of you can go through, so. What do you do? I mean, I, I get that door open and I'm like. All right. Uh, you fly through. Who's the next person? As everybody else following suit, what are you doing? Yeah, I think Maurice goes last, if that tracks with everybody, uh, scooping up Duncan and he um, unconsciously um, makes a weave when he arrives and we'll deal with that once we get through. Okay. I was going to suggest perhaps Curie either be very close to Maurice in the order or is last because I think Curie wants to take one last look behind the portal into the room that they have all just vacated. Okay. Yeah, you should be last. Uh, as you look back, what are you looking for? Does she see a mirror? Make me one more perception roll. Thanks, I hate it. 
Seven plus one is eight. In a small corner, about the size of an eight by ten, you see a very ornate Rococo-esque frame. You see your eyes looking back at you. And he nods. You just see it. The reflection put her fi uh, her finger to her lips. And you see in Kiri's eyes a kind of wary confirmation, like her fear has been confirmed, but that now she knows what's going on. And then she goes through the portal. Okay. So, what all of you see next requires a different song. As you walk through this portal, all of you find yourselves once again in this very kind of almost overwhelming kind of you feel that drop in ocean feeling that you had when um, you stepped back into the um, the gateway of the Silver Sun. And uh, similarly, when you first encountered the Warden of the Blue, when you very, f uh, when you initiated this adventure together. But there is something different about this, which is there was that unmistakable feeling of an overwhelming presence that was at same time immediate and small and kind of uh, understandable and comprehensible and yet large and incomprehensible and impersonal and abstract, that of the warden uh, themselves in each case. But here you realize that wherever this is, this gateway, um, that presence, you do not feel it. Instead, all of you see uh, a young woman uh, in her 20s, um, where her eyes would normally be, um, you guys see this very kind of ornate, painted on set of eyes uh, with very vibrant color. Uh, she is wearing this very ornate dress that contrasts very sharply with a uh, wood and uh, steel clipboard that she is uh, holding uh, with a writing stylus in the other hand, looking at all of you uh, as she says uh, to everybody uh, collectively. One moment. Um, <laughs> Hello, I'm Kessia. Uh, I am Shima's attendant, uh, as unfortunately she is unable to uh, greet you here at the gate this fine day, um, but I am here to act as her proxy. Um, what brings you to the Gold Sun this day? <laughs> uh, honestly, I think you have, like, tips the rifle back a little bit up on her shoulder, and she just says, Killing Vespertine. Uh, Gav, I need to ask you how, when you cast this portal spell uh, and you spent the sorcerer, like, what did it feel like? What what effort did it exert? Interesting. Um, I, I think it was more like a mental will rather than anything taxing. Uh, I think it felt rather natural. Most of the magic she she conjures she has been sort of doing on the fly like a lot of her magic it doesn't come from any study it usually comes out of instinct this is no different um but it it, it did kind of feel a little bit less like whoa that just happened i couldn't do that before and a little bit more like uh uh you, you know like if um like you naturally take to a certain sport or something like that. It felt very, very just, as, I'm as, supposed to be doing that, yes. As natural as breathing. Yes. And as, so when um, Maurice is just looking at you, like his eyes are like sparkling and he is feeling this immense paternal like pride in, in you. Um, and you feel 
as you make that first exhale and then inhale to say you're, you're hunting vespertine, you feel uh, you that you have five more uh, sorcery points. Oh than my! You did before. Oh my uh, goodness! As, as he weaves together love and breath. Wow! Awesome. Um, oh boy! At which Let point? Let me write all that down. You are. <laughs> by the way, um, did you guys uh, just to clarify? Did you guys bring the valise with you? It sounds like that we are bringing it now. Okay. Uh, because the very first thing that happens is the woman frantically flips through her clipboard and says, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, did you say Vespertine? Yes. And uh, she looks at the valise that you are carrying with you and says, um, I happen to know one of their members was carrying that. And they're dead. And she's gonna look at you, and yeah, I think Twig, you want to. You sure get a... we can't see that warden now? And I think, well, you... yeah, go yeah, ahead. How do you know? And how do you know that? And not she... to point fingers or anything. Twig says, pointing a finger. Uh, and she she begins flipping frantically through this clipboard, uh, and she says, um, "Well, first off, uh, who are all of you? Why are you carrying a?" a Vespertine implement, and why should I not turn this floor to jello to have you sink through it uh, until you give me a straight response? My name is Gabriel Kazan. My parents are Madruin and Shia Kazan. You are free to bring that to the Warden and verify my claims. I assure you that they are true. We've already taken out a few forces that we found making an incursion into the silver, and we are here to ensure the same does not happen in your son as well, and I am happy to make a similar report to anyone of authority that you would choose here, if it will help us find our quarry faster. What was the name of the um, Silver Warden? Uh, the Silver Warden was Thurim. And then Maurice whispers, and also Thurim asked us to come. Uh, at which point she's like taking all of this in. I will say, uh, Gav, uh, make a uh, interaction roll. You may. Oh, add, I'm so good at that. Yeah, uh, you may add. <laughs> I, that was very convincing. I will say to each of you, make an interaction roll uh, mm -hmm. and add two to each of your efforts because they are similarly <laughs> convincing for very different reasons. All right. <laughs> I nice. Yeah. How much? My desk is the worst. That's gonna be an eight. It's gonna be an eleven. As uh, she looks at both of you, it just set, like just starts flipping through this. Like you realize that there are more pages uh, on the clipboard than are like actually <laughs> physically possible. And as she's flipping through them, the material is changing. Uh, like one of these appears to be like a sheet of of leather. Another one seems to be of like almost like ivory uh, and uh, bone. And then on another, she kind of flips over and it's crocodile hide. Uh, and finally, she uh, looks at this and says, Yes, there was a communication from the Silver Sun of a uh, 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 a foiled attempt. So that was all of you. It's us, the foilers. Is that your uh, formal name? <laughs> Yes. A shame yes. forbid. No. Yes. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, I'm a problem. We need to give more thought to if we're going to have a group name. It certainly is not going to be the very first thing. Words have Thrillers. meaning, you know. As she's kind of like have arrived. It's not a. It's not. We have individual names. <laughs> ah. Um. Yes. Uh. My apologies. Uh, uh. Who are the remaining three of you? I know your parents now and your and your name. Um, and those of your parents, rather. Uh, what about the three of you? Are you uh, acting uh, with her as your representative? Or... Well, and don't forget Duncan. Aww. And <laughs> you realize that, like, she doesn't have eyes, but she still is able to kind of, like, see you guys through whatever this kind of paint is. Uh, and her, her brow kind of scrunches in a way that like has that aw moment uh, just clearly communicated by the paint. And uh, he puts Duncan and says, Maurice Webb, nice to meet you. 
and uh, she flips all of the pages back to the clipboard, which becomes very thin once again, and says, um, greetings, Cassia, um, with a Q and a U. Um, uh, you other, uh, two members of the, we'll just call you foilers for now. Um, I, I won't, I won't make, I will strike the note. That's fine. But, um, I do need your names for posterity. So to deliver a message. Wake. Pleasure to meet you and yourself. Uriel von Hollingsworth, the yeah. first assistant librarian of the Order of the Fans. Oh, advance. Excellent. Um, so this uh, casts your arrival in a different light. Um, normally, I uh, try to ascertain, you know, your um, desires for fluidity and transformation and change. But this represents a big change. So I'm happy to uh, uh, help you in any way that I can. Um, what other business may you have in the gold? Will it just be the murder? Uh, is there anything else that I can assist you with? Twig officially, like, I think Twig has just been kind of like, up until this point, been kind of like, this sucks. I don't want to talk to people. And with that, with this, I think has, um, <laughs> it's just like. So if you turn the ground to jello, is that like edible jello or is that more of a textural change? Gav turns around and is just like, <laughs> uh, Maurice is, is whispering to uh, uh, Curie what Jello is. Yeah, at which at which point, not. Oh. <laughs> at which point, uh, I've never thought to ask anybody that I've encased in Jello whether or not they like the taste. So many questions in such a short amount of time. But I thought you were supposed to eat Jello. Why would you encase someone in it? Oh, well, well that's actually. <laughs> no, go ahead. It seems like you have a response. I had one plan. But... Uh, 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 Maurice uh, describes uh, the fascination of 1950s cooking where you would just oh, put shit in gelatin. The crimes, you mean? Which literally sounds to Gav as if, because she lived about uh, a decade or two before this. So it sounds like you are describing a dystopian future that she <laughs> has avoided. <laughs> And, and as you we won the war for this, for this, for this. <laughs> and as you describe this, uh, Cassia just looks at all of you, just says, and once again, the Golden Sun's uh, influence is felt even in the gray. Um, my question still stands: Is there anything else I can do for you? It 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 sounds uh, 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 like you have quite the plan. So you saw someone carrying this. Uh... Valise, are they still here? Uh, well, uh, the person that was carrying this valise, uh, two of them departed, um, carrying it, uh, I ostensibly, uh, wherever you found it. Uh, and you, I, like, just let that happen? I mean, we took care of it, but, like, why did, how do you know that, and why didn't you do anything? Um. Sorry. I am just a mere attendant, um. I was unable to decipher any of these sorts of intentions. I only got this message yesterday. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. But if we no jellification. Be... Yes, no jellification necessary uh, when <laughs> uh, their intentions are, uh, un well, really unread. Besides, this is a place of rebirth. Who's to say that um, whoever had terrible intentions would remain as such while they were here. They... I promise you that these people have no intention of changing. Well, that's unfortunate because this place is change. Um, any leads that we've be given about any remaining Vespertine that are still here? Yes, <laughs> they did say in their correspondence, the usual place in the Gold Sun. Any idea you might be able to give us of where that might be would be helpful. And I'm going to turn a card for her. And, uh, but as she's kind of like thinking about this, a usual place, there's not really a, such a thing as a usual place. And I have turned the card Forbidden Game, which accentuates blue and weakens red. It is notions, cats, clocks, and wind. Its meanings are danger, intellect, strategy, and balance. Uh, the temptation to partake in the game is strong, but you know you shouldn't. It's dangerous. It's forbidden. 
is far more than it seems. Um, a leader uses elaborate plans to get what they want. A military leader develops intricate strategies as they prepare their soldiers. People are engaged in some kind of game or sport. Weavers playing the spider's game become important to the matters at hand. Uh, the PC's use of intellect proves to be successful even beyond what was expected. Two factors at play. Um, and the NPC has utterly uh, outmaneuvered the PC. The balance is off kilter. Something the PC relied on falls apart. Um, there is a threat here, but it is one that can be overcome with cleverness and strategy. This cleverness needs to take into account the balance of all involved factors, which can be daunting, as sometimes those factors are difficult to see. The game isn't life like life. It's better. It's more realistic. And she's like thinking about this and just said, well, if it's a usual place, there's no real such thing as a usual place here. Everything changes. Huh. So what part of the gold does not? What part of the gold does not change? I... Mm. And as she's kind of like flipping through her clipboard, well, there is one place that is fairly uniform in the way that it does change, um, the Dolor Sea. Might be a good place to start. Well, uh, I can perhaps uh, assist you in some degree. It looks like your current spell has you bound for the Resurrection Mound um, deep in the mainland. However, um, while I am waiting for a response from uh, uh, Lady Shima, I can try to redirect your spell a little bit to someplace a little bit closer, but you're going to need to swim. Does anybody have problems swimming? Uh, I can swim. I don't actually Look on it to once. Swim. Oh god. <laughs> you're you're actually what? I don't know if I can swim. I don't remember ever swimming. Uh your Vizlay. Can I swim? Let me look at my spell. <laughs> <laughs> you're Vizlay, you should be fine. Um the uh, what about you yourself, uh, Miss Von Hollingsworth? I think or, I read um, a book on it once. Excellent. <laughs> Good. I have always thought that book learning is absolutely essential to practical knowledge. Um, and practice. Oh, and, and sorry to interrupt. Like, I would love to go swim. Uh, Lady Shima, uh, how long has it been since you heard from them? Oh, uh, she's in and out very often, but she just has a great deal of business. Everything changes and everything requires her touch. And that, sorry, that is the guardian? Yes, that yeah, is yeah, the yeah. sun warden, Lady Shima. That's why Therum sent us. Therum hasn't heard from... Lady Shima in a while. Is that so? Yeah. Yep. That uh, doesn't strike you as odd that she's just like not doing her job? Uh, I actually do need to bear with me as I look something up, which mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think I'm not sure that Lady Shima is. Uh, uh, or did I call you out? Sorry. You, you called me. You called me out and I should have had this prepared. But let me see. I will tell you for sure, oh, show, uh, what is going on with Therim's sister? Um, oh, that slaps. Uh, what's that? Oh, I just figured out an option okay. to Even swim. Other than, well, not swim, but I fi figured out a non swimming option. Uh, at which point, um, she looks at you and and says, uh, I am not aware that uh, Lady Shima has a brother uh, who is a warden. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, she is the only, only one of her kind. Uh, oh, sorry, I must be confused. Who, who's Lady Shima? Uh, Lady Shima is the warden of the Golden Sun. And then Maurice kind of scratches his head and turns back to everyone else and is like, am I misremembering something? Are you? Because I don't remember this. <laughs> I, DM, DM, I have a perfect memory. Uh, you do. And by I, I mean Twig has a perfect memory. I, I will tell you this, with your perfect memory, you know this. 
Therim. GM. Uh, GM. Therim. GM. I, I have I have everything memorized. Everything. Um he did say that his sister was lost in the golden sun, but there is something that you realize, which is just because uh, there uh, this entity is a warden doesn't necessarily mean that his sister is one as well. At which point uh, he, the uh, Cassia looks and at- And I've learned a lesson that just because Therum is a warden, it doesn't mean his sister is a warden as well. The more you know. <laughs> and at, at which point uh, Cassia says, but Shima, honestly, she just, um, she'll probably be back later in the day, but it sounds like uh, this is rather urgent. I'm happy to let you wait. It might be some time. She uh, has gone all the way to uh, uh, the Al Nam, uh, 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 the Ashnam uh, Monastery. What has brought her to the monastery? Oh, just the fact that, you know, everything is in the process of metamorphosis and who better than to uh, to touch uh, such things and to uh, ensure their um, completion of rebirth than the Warden of the uh, uh, Gold Sun. She's very hands-on. I believe that maybe instead of the Dollar Sea, if it is at all possible, could we be taken to the monastery? I can certainly uh, endeavor to do so. At the Vespertine in the Silver laid a direct trap for Queen Frigelaba. And if your warden is as hands-on as you say, then I have every reason to suspect that whatever the Vespertine intended to do here, it will be to try to attack her. Your point is very well taken. Very well. Um allow me and she reaches a hand for it as if to grasp yours do you take it yes uh as you take uh her hand you see uh the skin under your hand beginning to shift and to metamorphose and to change uh you see uh at one point the kind of uh skin that is reminiscent of your father's uh race you see uh, alabaster, almost bone white skin. You see that almost melt away uh, into the bone and flesh and tendons itself before all that reforms as her intention was not to touch and change uh, your hands, but instead to change the intentions of the spell that you have cast. Uh, and you see those painted eyes, the pupils flare with a golden energy, uh, and you see uh, something change in the door. It changes in terms of materials. You watch as it becomes this very elaborate oaken door. Uh, you see another fashion in which it turns into kind of like this silver uh, metallic, uh, then a massive stone door before once again metamorphosing back uh, into the bunker. Uh, the notice, however, you note the thing that you do notice uh, having changed uh, is there is a very elaborately carved. Uh, or not carved, but engraved design in the knob of the door itself. Uh, and she retracts her hand and looks at you and says, well, I believe that should give you a straight shot. Um, however, if you have any other questions, uh, I will do my best to relay those to uh, the, um, uh, uh, the warden in the event that you miss her. In the meantime, I can also conduct some additional research. Uh, is there anything else I can help with? Got if you hear, Ooh, sorry. No, go ahead. Now I feel bad. <laughs> Got any good like food recommendations? <laughs> I like Jello. That's something that I've. It's kind of a default for me, but um, there is some... Jello. Well, yes, uh, I like Jello. It always shifts and it moves, and it's really fun and. Like you pointed out, you can just throw things into it. It's. I really want to get a Jello snack. That's guess what I'm gonna do when we're done with the stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at which point, I hate Jello so much. She uh, looks at all of you and just says, "Very well. Um, 
There are some very fine uh, restaurants in the capital city of uh, the Golden Sun. This monastery is a little bit of a distance away, but um, if you have uh, an opportunity, you should really, uh, when possible, um, go and uh, really just check some of the uh, sites out. It's definitely not as kind of uh, chaotic as Kadalish. That's on the night side, but uh, when you get a chance, uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to direct you to some of my favorite haunts. Cool. Well, thank you. You've been so helpful and kind. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Anyhow, um, once again, good luck with the murder. Um, I will talk to you uh, when you should uh, need an attendant. Otherwise, uh, uh, I expect Lady Shima will be able to attend to your needs. Thank you. Wait, before you go, is there something that we owe Lady Shima later? If- when we entered the silver, we all had to pay something we created or something like that? Well, I mean, really, we're just more concerned with the opportunity that you have to create change and to, you know, accentuate the metamorphoses that are already on hand in the gold sun. And it sounds like you are going to be succeeding with a plum at that, assuming uh, you succeed. Yeah, death will can, do that. Can Twig reach out and touch her clipboard? You may certainly try. Go ahead and make me a move. That is going to give you an indigestion. Yeah. That is like the TARDIS of clip. No, no, no. I'm not trying to eat it. I'm not trying to eat it. I what? swear. You may, uh, you may go ahead and make me a movement roll. With, um, with, uh, da, 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 let me look at my little scratch sheet here. I'll use my last movement, Bene, for a total of nine. Nine? Uh, you would have needed a 13. Uh, I will say with that, though, you come very close to grasping it and kind of like touching it, at which point she kind of yanks it away and says, hey, rude. I just wanted to see if it was bigger on the inside or the outside. You can ask next time, Twig. It's important to use one's words, not just eat them. Wow. At which point such, such knowledge is earned thank you very much and at which point she just kind of like kind of like bites her lips a little bit and then goes it's really cool and she just starts flipping like pages of the clipboard all these different materials like flying out at which point oh yeah she just like throws like she takes a pulls a page and throws it and it's like basically uh seaweed that you would find in a sushi restaurant like the, the wrapping Sorry. paper and she's just like it's so cool this job has its perks and this is a big one. I think Kiri was nodding along, like as she was saying, knowledge must be earned. She looked very like, like, you know, <laughs> like she agrees with this. And then as soon as she devolves into, but let me show you now, Kiri like immediately rolls her eyes and is like, ah. It went, it went from academia to gremlin and <laughs> Kiri was out. <laughs> Correct. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think doesn't, Twig just wants to, uh and uh she says so um uh best of luck uh and uh hopefully we'll get a chance to talk soon and uh as she does that um you just see the uh kind of like the surrounding area around you uh begins to disapparate and to kind of fade away almost like a dissolve uh and she dissolves along with it Um, and she just kind of like waves saying, uh, as the voice kind of trails off, bye now. Mm -hmm. And as you kind of like turn, you realize that all of you are standing outside a beautiful, very, very intense looking metamorphosing monastery. And we'll pick up right there uh, 10 minutes from now after we take our break. So, uh, all of you find yourselves on this kind of like patched grassland. It's this, you know, massive kind of almost like savanna of grassland gold uh, in nature. The blades of grass uh, underneath your feet uh, are some of the finest glittering gold you have seen. Um, I think even. Uh, Maurice, as you're kind of like taking everything in, you're looking around and 
uh, in a nearby kind of uh, patch of a copse of trees, uh, only a few feet away from you, you, you see hanging off of a branch, uh, several chameleons seemingly just enjoying this kind of like uh, uh, the shine of the gold sun's rays upon them. Uh, you see off in the distance a number of starlings that seem to be forming patterns uh, uh, as they kind of fly through the air above. And laid out before all of you is the um, Monastery of Abayash. Now, what is very interesting about this, having been kind of uh, uh, taking this place in for the first time, the thing that strikes you is it doesn't seem... Uh, uh, like anything beyond like a very ornate chapel or ornate kind of temple uh, in its own way. It has kind of flying buttresses and uh, a number of kind of almost gothic elements. And then before your eyes, it shifts. The uh, Almost like the buttresses almost turn 360 degrees and then suddenly become these kind of like flanking components to uh, embrace and kind of uh, help this forming minaret uh, as it spirals up into the sky, uh, where before it had been this kind of like almost this longhouse uh, style uh, with just really strange gothic architecture pieces bedecking it. Um, it seems to just be in a constant flux, this building. Uh, and yet the thing that strikes you is teeming uh, throughout this structure and what look to be a number of uh, lesser structures surrounding it uh, are these kind of like patchworks of like village and um, and settlements uh, that as you're kind of like watching, you see all of these kind of golden robed people going about and minding their own business, uh, walking, conducting business of the day uh, uh, around. And as you're kind of like taking all of this in, I am curious... What do you guys do? And Duncan's squirming around in Maurice's arms, and he's like, "Okay, okay fine," and yeah, sets him down. I was gonna say it's like, like, "Ooh, lizard! Ooh, lizard!" And it, it, it kind of like immediately, uh, 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 Duncan immediately kind of begins, uh, kind of pawing up at the the bark <laughs> of the nearby tree, and it just says, "Hey, hey, you!" I see you. I see you. See you. <laughs> Behave yourself. But I see him. Zach, you were a golden retriever in a not so recent <laughs> life, or not so far <laughs> unrecent life. I am and a golden. Shows. I am a golden retriever of a human being. Yes, that this we have ascertained this about me. Um, but yeah. Uh, Duncan is having fun. What are you guys doing? I, I feel like Gav is on alert just a little bit. Um, I don't think she's, you know, expecting a very sudden attack, but she's she's keeping her eyes open okay. as they approach the church, um, the monastery rather. Give me a um, interaction roll. Uh, not an interaction roll. This would be a perception roll. Oh, so I was about to get very concerned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'm not. Oh, I just chuck my dice flying across the room. Let's try that again. <laughs> uh, six. So, as you're kind of like taking a perception, uh, kind of like taking in the sight here, um, with a six, what you kind of see as you're kind of like walking around is that um, there. are all these berobed people that are kind of like moving in and out, they're kind of conducting their business the same way that um, the residents of a small village might. Uh, there are people uh, working the land, uh, ostensibly growing crops that uh, as you kind of watch, you see them kind of shift and change from, uh, 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 from you know, fallow field to uh, sown to harvest to uh, ripe and people just carrying around uh, bushels and baskets of these kind of like ever-changing uh, crops. Uh, you see people uh, kind of um, seemingly kind of hawking wares at a market not far off. It's a very small place that is completely dwarfed by this constantly metamorphosing structure that is at the heart uh, of this settlement, this monastery. 
uh, the uh, Abiyash. But the thing that like really kind of like strikes you is these people uh, are almost like uniform in their mode of dress while even though the materials that they are wearing are changing. But they're not, they're not paying you any mind seemingly. They're just kind of going about their day even though all of you look drastically different from the surroundings. Or the surrounding residents, I should say. Gab doesn't even know if that's something she should be concerned about because she's never been here before. Okay. Yeah, what are you guys, uh, what are the rest of you guys doing as uh, uh, Gav has taken point? Maurice kind of says sada voce to the group. Um, do we even know Theram's sister's name? Hey, DM. Yeah. Or GM, storyteller, whatever. I have perfect memory. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, um, <laughs> I think that I will tell you this. Um, it wouldn't make sense for him to not tell you the name. So I will say that uh, her name is Thessenia with a T-H. Thanks, Twig. Appreciate your memory. Yeah, your fantastic memory. <laughs> like a steel trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you recall uh, her name uh, coming. Her name comes to mind. Uh, do you do anything else with this info? Um, yeah, Maurice does not do anything else with this info. Okay. Uh, yeah. Looking around. We, we have our circlets, right? Uh, yeah, I, in the depending on the different shapes that they took. Yeah, I will say this. Uh, I do know that your circlet is, has taken the form of a roach goblin. Um, what do the rest mm -hmm. of y'all's uh, circlets look like? Uh, just so uh, we can describe for the uh, audience how you're kind of wearing them and you know what kind of accoutrement they look like. Didn't one of you describe it? Yeah, I'm afraid I'm. I I remember what I I said for Gabs. I'll 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 search for it real quick in the notes. I was gonna say um, yours. Gab, you you guys made the decision on it. I remember that. I think it was yeah. dog tags, wasn't it? It's a, yeah. A I think Soviet, so too. The Soviet World War II, which is not quite a dog tag. It's a bakelite cylinder with a yes. of paper in it. All right. That's I thought right. it was essentially tags. And uh, uh, what about Curies? What does that look like? I remember if that was that something y'all decided also or did that just not get touched on i think uh it's was specifically said since you you were not in the valise or valise falaf the my notes say my notes say what should gavin curie have yeah uh, no i remember ah. that twig was the one that was that that went into the shop and gave the descriptions i mean how oh, i might have pitched a like a hair a hair clip yeah, that's, that's like that's a, um, yeah. a hair comb, like a yeah, yeah. I think I think I might have pitched that, but I don't know if that got as I got. I went down a history rabbit hole with Gav, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. What uh? What did uh? What did you choose for uh? uh for Curie then? I think that's it right. was it was like a hair comb. That's right. That's right. Pardon yeah. Me. I'm okay. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> So, so you guys are decked out in all of this stuff. Um, I think even yours was like a, a, a tie pin, wasn't it? Um, that sounds right. Yeah. I think I, I will choose to retcon it in this moment that it actually fits inside the brim of my ivy cap. Awesome. Wearing. Excellent. Yeah, so you guys are wearing these circlets of mind shielding. Um, I think that uh, Gav... Mind and, shielding. Yeah. And um, Kiri and uh, Maurice, what are you guys doing? How are, how are you assisting this process? If at all. I don't think I am. <laughs> I mean, I think... So, so this book that Kiri has with her is about the gold that had the, it contained the information about the Elder Brand, but it also has other stuff in it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Can, can she look up this name, like, in the index to see if there's information in this book about Thurim's sister? Uh, certainly. I, I I will tell you this. You can look for uh, Thessenia, uh, mm -hmm. and you can also look for the Abayash. It just kind of depends on how quickly you want to do this. 
Well, until we move into the monastery, I feel like Carrie, Carrie will spend all of the time before we actually start walking somewhere, like reading the book and looking for this. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So in that case, go ahead and make me, um, I think this is just an intellect roll or, yeah, I think it's intellect. Go ahead. This is just how much uh, information you can absorb uh, in yes. a quick enough manner. Will do. That's a nine. Okay. So on a nine, uh, you have you take a look uh, and I think leaf through starting with the index. Um, you start with like very clearly the the A's uh, as it were, and you uh, investigate the Abayash. And basically, what you learn about the Abayash uh, is that it is part. It is the monastery of the Order of Yash. Uh, which believes in the oneness of all things. All of existence is Yash. All of existence is constantly in flux. Therefore, Yash is change. So, um, Abiyash is basically the center of this order, and not everybody in the city is a Yashite, which is what the uh, uh, the monastery's monks are called. Um, but you know for a fact that um, it pretty much all of the Yashites live here. Um, so that said, the other thing that represents kind of like the highest kind of um, one thing that really is strange is you fee you see a notice for Pathwalkers, which is that um, apparently this was this had a very thriving trade with Pathwalkers. Um, uh, who would stop here uh, as they would take basically and kind of build and craft uh, wooden materials out of like glass-like wooden trees uh, and turn them into very ornate and oftentimes magically infused uh, crafts. And oftentimes this, for Pathwalker merchants, this was a very good place to stop for uh, very desirable goods throughout the rest of the actuality. The Fabulous. Yeah. Go ahead. The other thing you will learn is you're looking for Thesenia, and you don't see a listing for a name uh, per se, but there is something that um, is often dog-eared, or it seems like there is a page that has received a great deal more wear, second only to the On Elderbrin page, which is there is one for the Melidius Manor, uh, which is a manor house which is purported to be a uh, den of hedonism, uh, as well as celebration of change and celebration of rebirth. Um, and there are a number of attendants there that are believe, let me look up this to make sure, believe that they are called something real fancy. Um, they are called um, the I will tell you this, the only person that is listed as kind of a um, uh, 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 kind of like the pr 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 proprietress or the kind of like head of this manor is called her elegance. Uh, the attendants to her elegance are also called aureates. And that's what you get with that nine. Very cool. So I think Kiri goes on a face journey as she proceeds through this information. I think the first, she's nodding along through the stuff about the monastery. I think as she begins to read about the Melitonous Manor, she's like wrinkles her nose at the idea of this place and why would anyone want to go there? Uh, but once she hits the bit about her elegance, I think she is more keenly interested. Um, she looks up for the rest of the group kind of in like a very tour guide sort of mode. Um, so apparently the monastery is devoted to what is essentially a kind of monism. You know, the view that reality is one unitary organic whole with no interdependent parts, except that they have codified monism as Yash, something called Yash. Um, interestingly enough, I don't know if that affects how we get in, but certainly knowing that fact could be useful. Um, there's also some sort of manner called the Melitonous Manor that might have something to do with our missing sister. At least the person in charge of it is called Her Elegance, and if the rim is anything to go by, I would assume he has a fairly elegant sister. Fascinating, and this was in the valise. 
Well, th this is in the book. The um, book was in the valise. Yes. Well, yes. In fact, this is the book the light suggested or drew me toward. May I? Of course. And Maurice takes it and flips through and uses his rapid read cantrip uh, over the next minute reading the entire thing. Excellent. Um, so the very first thing that you pick up is you realize the city uh, that Kessia was talking about called Peristal, which is the largest city in the Golden Sun. Uh, you also uh, understand that this place that you originally were uh, uh, kind of bound to go, the Resurrection Mound, uh, was actually a place where people would bring dead bodies uh, to have them basically reborn as like newly, freshly um, soulless bodies so that whoever was kind of separated from their body would be able to um, uh, kind of jump into the body without it being dead. Um, there are also some notes that you've learned about the Dolor Sea, which is that it is very, um, uh, uh, it is very kind of, uh, it's very tumultuous. It's always changing. So there's always storms and there are always uh, uh, kind of like just like deep currents uh, contrasted with very placid seas. Uh, and then on top of that, you just learn so much about the Golden Sun just reading all of this uh, that you would say you have a general knowledge of everything uh, within this. And more importantly, you all like you and I think Kiri, after some looking, you have found uh, what is um, essentially a map uh, of what has been charted of the Golden Sun, therefore, uh, so far. And so I will share that with you guys. But the other thing that you will know, um, uh, Maurice, that you will learn is that the Elderbrin are originally, according to this encyclopedia, are originally from here. Uh, I think at, he hands the book back to uh, Kiri, assuming that they've been kind of talking back and forth about things that he's, and he uh, op opens the, the book and like looks at the back and looks at the front, says, can you find any providence on who might have published this? I mean, Kiri's delighted to look. Uh, you would know this uh, just as this was listed. Uh, it is actually, this is something I failed to include, but it's very clearly kind of uh, listed out as an excerpt from the still unfinished encyclopedia of the Actuality Volume 19 by the Tone Publishing Staff. Both, yeah. both of you have access to that info. Yes. The Tone Publishing Staff. Have you heard of them, Maurice? I roll. Yeah, to know? Absolutely. I'd love to roll to know. Yeah, roll to know. <laughs> um, let's see. Which pool would you like? I, I think this is going to be intellect. You can add magical lore for this, for, for non-codified uh, lore. Okay. Uh, I want to know. Ooh, can you can, show wait, me? Wait, 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 wait. Is this a good uh, hidden knowledge? Yeah, absolutely. All I was right. about hit, to ask hit. if I could donate a hidden knowledge. No. Spending a hidden knowledge to know. All right. What you got? Oh, fuck me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's, it was the cone what? Uh, is the tone staff. The tone, the tone publishing st staff. Tone, tone publishing staff. Publishing staff. Um, the tone publishing staff are... Oh... Um, Based in Indigo, uh, they're not in Saturn. Uh, they are all right. Help me out. What What are some other places in, in Indigo? Let's Let's pull up a map here. Oh, you want to challenge me? I got the Enchiridion oh, in the I'm path. Not, let's rock. I'm, I'm not challenging. I'm. I want to. I want to build I don't this know what's together. Going on right now, and I'm right. scared. You should be scared. Should be scared. We're adding lore. It's gonna get weird. Um, hold on one second. Uh, okay, the realm of the indigo sun it is i will tell you this uh it is they are based uh in uh i want to say tev abius tev, uh, i love that i love that so that's where they are and uh yeah so maurice is like i think they're in tev abius and i'm not even sure i'm saying that right yeah, absolutely yeah i've just now realized there's more than saturine 
in Indigo, and I just need to know now. I have so many questions. What the fuck happened to them during the war? Or did just Saturine have this war? That's a good question. Maybe you should ask. Uh, oh, incidentally, that. No, this is a player I curiosity. An <laughs> I need an atlas. Can I draw sketch out a quick map? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm going to put one in our notes. Sorry, streamer or stream audience. You can't see this. Uh, I will also tell you guys, um, this is, um, I will tell you this, uh, for, for stuff that has kind of like transpired during the war, like, um, that's a very good question as kind of like what has happened. Um, but the other thing I will say here, as I'm thinking about this. It was uh, just player curiosity. Yeah, absolutely. Can... I think, um. Yeah, I'll have I'll have some more information for you guys later. Um, let me I'll I'll think about this. But your your play. Oh, that was what I was going to remember. Uh, Gabrielle, your seed has become active again now that you have moved oh, into a new sun. That's right. So don't forget that. Uh, question: Are we in a new day? Uh, we are. Just I have an ability that lets me choose a thing every day. Uh huh. Um, and I would like to. Tr I, I doesn't. I, it's actually incredibly <laughs> counterproductive and unhelpful to do it, uh -huh. but I'm gonna do it for the aesthetic. Uh -huh. And that is, um, I would like to uh, switch my my forte ability, uh, which is um, paths of creation. I would like to attune to the gold sun. You got it. Awesome. I love that. I have no gold spells. This is literally handicapping myself. But you never, but... you never know. You can try to apply it in other ways. We'll see. Um, okay. So all of you have been kind of like doing this fact finding literally as you're walking the street. Um, yeah. I, sorry, I kind of imagined that we were still kind of standing outside of it, planning our, our move. Does anybody else have a feeling I thought we were that? walking and talking. Oh, perfect. Okay. So we're I'm kind of yeah. goggling, like tourist goggling. Uh, where do you guys want to go? I do think in that moment though, uh, as we're, we're, we're chit-chatting and you're talking about the book and everything like that, Gav does become aware that the seed is flaring and offers up, well, if he wants more information on the Guardian's sister, I could inquire, or we could use this moment to pinpoint where our quarry is. Only one of those is timely. Well, I think only one of those is timely. Or they're related. Oh my God, you're probably right. Ugh. I don't know. The, the The only reason that I asked to bring us here is because the last time the, the Vesper team wished to attack Frigelova, I know that they didn't go after the Warden and the Silver Sun necessarily, but it seems that this particular Warden is much more hands-on. And, and where is she anyway? And Maurice starts looking around. Would you around. even know what the Warden would look like if he were... Probably not one of these people in robes. I don't know. But I How guess do you know? <laughs> maybe she's gold? Maybe she looks like Jello. Either way, I don't see her right now. What if she's invisible? I mean, don't you see things with the seed? I'm invisible to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So what do you see? Uh, what do I see? Uh, you know what? This <laughs> I'm is still a... learning how this works. This is where oh, I my cranky sniper eyes see. <laughs> I I turn a... I'm turning a card. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay. <laughs> the misremembered dream. Perfect. Uh, blue is strengthened. Red is weakened. Uh, it's mysteries, rats, mirrors, and stone. Its meanings are confusion, mistakes, changes in identity. Dreams are strange what? constructs of our subconscious, made stranger still because we don't remember them clearly. Uh, the Misrever Remember Dream isn't necessarily a bad card turn. It suggests confusion or mistakes, but they don't need to be the confusion or mistakes of the person in question. We all dream, so this card can represent the poor memory of befuddlement of anyone. It might also suggest that one should adopt a new identity or disguise something important in order to succeed. People are confused about something. An NPC makes a huge mistake. Something strange is occurring in the dreams of multiple people. Events transpire in the deeps of sleep. Um, ah, yes, there were rats coming out of mirrors in the sky in my dream, weren't there? 
Um, okay. So I think what this could mean is that I think that you're kind of like looking and you're, I think what you're thinking is that you are looking for a 20 foot tall deity. Like, uh, uh, like you are remembering the moment when, um, I think you saw Queen King Quiss attempt to defend, um, Saturine, uh, and remember that this warden was the size of a skyscraper. Um, and you're looking around and you are not seeing a skyscraper sized person, uh, or, or kind of manifestation of power. Um, so I think that that's the first thing that's kind of like thrown you off. Um, if you would like, you can make me a, another perception roll or, you know what? This is actually going to be an intellect roll. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. See what I'm ben spending did. a sortilege to give you an extra die. Oh. In which case, I won't do a Bene. Okay, good thing you did that, because one of those was a, a big old zero, and the other one was a seven. <laughs> All right. So, on a seven, I think the thing that you realize is, okay, we are at the sun of change and rebirth. The warden is the uh you know was already said to have important business that you know basically has a hand she has a hand in everything that metamorphoses or changes um and the thing that you realize this big structure in front of you is continually changing that's what you get for seven mm -hmm. The way you said it is making me think now that the actual monastery itself is the warden. Could be. Or at the very least, she is inside. Why do I get the feeling it's a chrysalis? This entire sun's kind of a chrysalis, but nothing ever truly happens. I think it, the cycle would just continue. I don't know how this place works yet. I don't like it. If the whole thing is about change, then there's no end game. It's just constantly changing. And yet the Vespertine said something about the usual place. It does strike me as odd that a usual place within a constantly changing sun. Right. They could either very well be at whatever hideout they've established here, or they could already be on the move. At the very least, I think it might be beneficial for us to warn the warden. I think that Even if there accomplishes is no both of our... Yeah, I think that's great. One thing I would posit to all of you to think about, the Vespertine's overall goals, while the void is the opposite of change and rebirth, the act of getting there is. I think they would be... I don't know, less bothered, more sympathetic here. There's know. something to keep in mind. I'm not sure exactly if they would quantify a realm that is ever changing as something that is more relatable to them, or if they would see this as an abomination of just a constant act of creation. But think about what would disrupt the gold, right? What Nothing would be. But in addition to that, sameness maybe that's what we're looking for either way use the seed i love to say this but for which purpose we could ask Morning. where the vespertine are or we could ask where the the where thrim's sister is well i was i cannot do both with you on warning the warden but well we're here this is the last location that we know of so we could simply oh. walk into the monastery and warn her okay but for knowledge of where the Vespertine are or where their sister is. I can only ask one of these two questions. What do you guys think? Here is quiet for a minute. Well, we have a lead anyway about someone who could potentially be related to Threm's sister. That's something. We don't know anything about where to start to look for the Vespertine. Maybe that's where we start. And once we have that information, we can tell the warden. So she knows. We're in agreement. Twig? Twig is, 
kind of wandering towards, uh, it's starting to wander, like, just drift towards the monastery door. As you drift towards the monastery, that feeling of, like, when you selected gold, like, you feel like a stronger pull off of it as you get closer and closer to the monastery door. Like, basically, it's almost like like, like, attracting like. But you're doing that you guys are discussing what to ask the seed of truth or whether or not to use it. What are you guys doing? Uh, Maurice whistles loudly. I think he can do that, the the two finger thing that I absolutely cannot do. Yeah, it's a dad skill. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep, I'm still waiting. And go, Duncan, come on, leave those lizards alone. Soon. <laughs> and then uh, uh, just one little like, and then kind of like, no, you did a you real fly. good job seeing them. They're just trying not to be seen, and you just saw them all the time. You're so good. I saw them. <laughs> oh, my God. I just want to pet this dog. You're such a vicious little hunter. You're going to get them one day. <laughs> yep. Okay. Duncan has rejoined you. What do you guys do? Um, I think Gab was waiting for, like, a majority vote on that, so then she, she automatically turns around and sees that Twig has wandered up to the monastery and is going to jog over to them. Um, what are you doing? I don't know how to describe it, but, but it feels like we should go there. As the um, architecture shifts and one of these doors like arcs open into an open form rather than like a big closed heavy door, um, I'd like you to make me a perception check. I will put a betting into that. That is a six plus one and maybe score. Oh, that's right. I did just put all that effort into hot keying this. Um, okay, that's just seven. Okay. Well, as you kind of like glance past, you see a shimmer of gold uh, kind of catches your eye. And you see this woman, um, probably about six feet tall, maybe a little bit less. Um, she is at the center of the monastery. She has this beautiful kind of like golden markings all around her. Her eyes are a very kind of clear gold, uh, and, uh, uh, not gold, but kind of like a deep, deep gold, uh, that seem to glow a little bit. And these markings are all kind of like glowing as she seems to be kind of like manipulating and almost tutting her hands at the center of the, uh, monastery. Uh, and I think you see there, she's accrued like a small crowd of these Yashites, these uh, uh, monks uh, that are kind of watching her, uh, almost kind of a little reverent. Uh, and she appears to be kind of moving things. And as her hands move, you realize that some of the inner architecture is moving. Um, and she seems to be kind of like almost in a reverie. Uh, Twig, Twig just kind of like elbows Gav and goes, hey, look, it's the gold lady i guess they're all just the color the, of their sons seems lazy but okay <laughs> yeah GM i bet she would be gold <laughs> your gm will remember this <laughs> <laughs> but the shame the powers that be did not consult you about proper color coding uh, the, yeah. the blue blue guy was blue too right don't I'm gonna sing the song. God damn it! <laughs> <It's already laughs> I'm blue. But anyway, nope. So, um, yeah. So that that except sung, sung by the warden. Um, so, as you guys are having this conversation, she seems to finish whatever she's doing, and that minaret uh, once again has like this kind of spiraling rail um, that's kind of added, and you realize that. Over this process, the whole architecture of the uh, monastery has changed. Uh, and you see her move into a quick stride back uh, out uh, this entrance that you guys are standing in front of. Kiri, Maurice, what are you guys doing? Um, I think Maurice is like, and get ready, Duncan. She's about to use the seed. Yeah, and I think Kiri, Kiri is watching. She's just looking at Gav's hand where the seed resides. Yeah, that glow is just kind of like, you know, as like the 
uh, halo kind of spins having returned back to your chest when you put the uh, rifle away. It is spinning and the, that glow of the seed is effulging once again and kind of pulsing. Um, it seems to be pulsing a little bit more rapidly as she is moving closer to you, this woman. What are you guys doing? Like, I think at this point, like, moment of truth, Gabrielle, Twig, what's happening? Uh, so Lady Shima is coming our way? Uh, this woman is heading your way. She seems like she's about to, like, walk past you. Uh, oh, absolutely not moving out of the way. Yep, same. I think Gav uh, stands there and directly says, Lady Shima? Uh, she seems to ignore what you're saying. Uh, she is not uh, stopping her pace. Uh, she is continuing to move. Um, I'm going to ask you, Twig, are you sure you don't want to move out of her way? Uh huh. Okay. Look, I need to look I got something. a brand. Uh, like, look, it's either, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Maybe I'll die. Uh, she is not stopping, and she, as she moves uh, to uh, uh, kind of like through uh, uh, into the path of Twig, um, she just kind of like gently shoulder checks you. Um, you know what? Um, what's on your mind? Actually, you know what? I'm going to just turn a card. Um, as she shoulder checks you, um, just gently moving you out of the way, um, barely kind of, uh, 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 kind of like looking at you. Um, I drew the cat card, uh, which is meaning the cat card. Yeah. Uh, which is the companion of notions, cats, clocks, and winds. Uh, it meanings are solitude, curiosity, cleverness, and dexterity. Um, cats see much. Um, one sometimes must act alone to succeed. Curiosity and cleverness can be virtues, but be wary of taking them too far. A challenge may arise that involves both mental and physical dexterity. Someone important to matters at hand is a misanthrope and lives alone. A cat takes an interest. A trap is sprung by curiosity. An NPC's cleverness gets them into trouble. Humans make excellent domesticated companions for cats. So I'm going to tell you, as you brush shoulders with her... Um, I need you to make me a withstand roll. Your difficulty is 17. Um, which I have to hit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can do that. I am going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, depending on how you roll, how bad this is. Okay. Um, and this is just a straight roll. I don't have any abilities activated, so you can add some Bene. You can add magnificent uh, or uh, uh, Endeavor. Uh, what was it? Enhanced Endeavor, expands, uh, expanded Endeavor. If you have that secret, I do not. I have um, advanced Sortilage, though. Yeah, you can totally roll too if you want. I'm gonna do that. I don't think it matters, but. That's a six, a six, and a six, so. Wow, okay. So, okay. All right, so I will tell you this. Um, Gabrielle. It's a, still a fail though, right? Uh, Gabrielle, you're, it is, a fa it, it, it is a failure, but it is not a zero or a one. Uh, oh. Gabrielle, as you take a look um, uh, at this woman as she passes you, uh, apparently not giving you any notice, um, you watch as she touches, uh, as she bumps Twig, uh, Twig's ears get pointed and softly furred. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tries so hard not to laugh in that moment. <laughs> yeah. Is it, do I feel this or? Uh, you feel like a, a, a slight itch on the back of your ears. Can I be petty? Yeah, you may absolutely be petty. What are you doing? What's uh, what's she wearing? Uh, she is wearing. Well, what touched me, rather? Okay, um, her shoulder touched you. Um, what's 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 uh, what she got on her shoulder? Uh, her shoulder. She's wearing uh this very kind of like beautiful flowing uh purple dress. Um, 
and uh, purple and gold, bold, bold color choices. Purple Love and gold, that. and very dark, uh, just beautiful skin. Um, and yeah, so I think that just kind of like an epaulette that is holding um, this ornamental piece on the dress. I'd like, I think if she's going to touch me and some things are going to rub off, I think that fair play, turnabout is fair play. Um, I think the sheer pettiness of Twig is going to, I'd like to, I'd like to try to invest a little bit of my essence uh -huh. into assuming that that epaulet and, or whatever it's attached, the, the whole form is not sentient. Mm -hmm. I would like to make it sentient. Is this reflexive pettiness or this happened and you were like, fuck this you lady? This is reflexive pettiness. Okay, amazing. All right. I, just to be very clear, the way I'm playing this, I don't think, Twig is not in, fully in control of their powers. They are learning what this is to, the, to be them. Okris knows what's up, Twig does not. Um, okay, you are mm -hmm. awakening this epaulette. Okay. Um, what does it look like as this thing comes to life? I think, um, I think it's like watching, um, the world's cutest gold pill bug just kind of uncurl for a second and just feel the sun for the first time. Yeah, you just, you hear a yawn, uh, from the corner of, uh, her shoulder, just, <gasps> ah, oh. Are so beautiful, my lady. Um, and at which point she stops in her tracks, having moved past you, and then turns and looks at you. Uh, Twig's not looking back. Twig's uh, just still. Just, Twig is now staring at the the monastery, like doing doing one of these. Uh, and do you think she saw us? <laughs> and. All of you just hear her say, Now that is a very interesting change indeed. And uh, she looks at you, Twig. Mm -hmm. Who are you that travels to my realm? Oh, I'm sorry, you were uh, talking to me? She doesn't reply. She is... Gav is gonna like elbow nudge you. Yeah, um, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> are you Lady Shima? I am. Um... Can, so I, can I do a, 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 a snap weave? Uh, you may certainly do so. What are you like pulling? Pulling on the reins of a horse. Maurice grabs uh, the strands of the weave and uh, gives. Uh, <laughs> gives Twig uh, plus five Bene in interaction. Oh my god. All right. Let's see if they if that helps at all. Um, she she looks at all uh, uh, of you having, I think she just very clearly sees you cast this spell. Um, realizes it's not offensive, but also kind of like her eyes just flow over all of you like water. Uh, and suddenly... All of you guys realize that you are not standing uh, in the yard of the uh, Abayash anymore. Uh, you are not standing out of the, outside of the monastery. You are now back in the Golden Gate, wherein uh, you each found yourselves uh, greeted by Kessia. Um, and you just hear a familiar voice say to all of you, Oh, yes, welcome once again to... Oh, you found her. <laughs> um, at which point uh, she says, uh, Lady Shima, uh, these are the foilers uh, that I meant to write a note to you about. Um, uh, they wanted to get your attention speaking to some of the concerns that they had regarding the uh, uh, entries of the Vespertine into uh, the Gold Sun, uh, as reported by, once again, uh, 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 Queen Fregelova of the Silver Sun. Um... You've managed to get her attention. And she does it with this very kind of like perky smile that you realize, oh shit, oh shit, please don't fuck this up. And Duncan's now pawing at uh, Cassia's thighs. Yeah, absolutely. Just like, what was it? Hey, 
friendly lady. She is, though. Uh, the other thing you notice is that you are back in the Golden Gate, um, and the feeling that you felt was missing of having somebody that is omnipresent and yet also very personal and small and relatable to you has returned. <laughs> and so you, you realize the warden is in her home. She is having an audience with you. What do you want? What do you do? Uh, as I was saying, um, yeah, we, funny, we should bump into you. We were just on our way to try to find you. And, um, you realize, actually, I will say this, um, Maurice, because you absorbed the book, you realize that the best strategy in order to get her, what in order to speak to Lady Shima was to get her attention. And the only way you can do that is with a very powerful display of magical ability that is not invasive or offensive at all. And you realize mm. this is the only thing that would have worked. One of the only things. At her, which, yeah. Her epaulette is a level three creature, by the way. I uh, did dump all of my sorcery into it. And as uh, you did dump all your sorcery into it, um, her hand travels up to the epaulette, um, and the epaulette steps onto the back of her hand and she just very gracefully lets it kind of like flow up her arm and where the dress was held together by the epaulette uh it reweaves and changes and metaphor morphoses into a new weaved pattern holding up that shoulder and you now have her full attention oh yeah, and we were looking for you for reasons. And she looks expectantly at all of you. Those reasons being, <laughs> she's like, Gav is just like, what the hell? <laughs> um, those reasons being that we were able to stave off an incursion of Vesper team in the Silver Sun. They directly attacked Queen Fregelava and her court. We were making our way to you on the suspicion that something similar might be occurring here. A fascinating thought. Now, I have seen no such incursion onto my realm, but I have become more circumspect, more vigilant, let us say. However, if one such operative is located here in my son, then, unfortunately, only their entry or exit would arouse the suspicion of myself or Cassia, or any of my other attendants for that matter. And that's where we might be able to be of use. Uh, Gav, do the thing. All right. Uh, quite an audience to do it in front of, but uh, uh, she's going to take a breath and sort of like clasp her palms together where the uh, the, the veins will kind of ignite um, and just say, show me where the Vespertine and the Golden Sun are hiding. And as you uh, ask this question, um, you watch as a smile kind of curves up the lips of uh, this warden. And watching this transpire, um, you just hear her say, Ah, sister brother, there you are. It has been so long. And as you ask Pardon? this question, um, you realize that she is staring at the seed in your chest um, and addressing it. And as you do that, um, I need you to make an intellect roll as your brain is flooded with handwritten notes and knowledge. How, how many people am I carrying here in me? Too many cooks. <laughs> Too, Too many, many cooks. cooks. <laughs> My God. Uh, yeah, I will also pump uh, a bene into that intellect roll. Uh, <laughs> what could have been better? A uh, six. All right. On a six. Um, you get a flood of information about handwritten reports and notices about, uh, you realize, uh, 
stranded on the river banks uh, of the major Golden uh, River here in uh, the Golden Sun. Uh, let me find this right quick. Um, you have been reading reports of bodies recovered on the banks of the river Zim uh, that flows out from the Dolor Sea. Um, so basically, you have been, f like, these handwritten reports are, you realize, are made by the protectors of the Eldebrin families, the Feylines that are uh, basically of the tribes that are native uh, to the Gold Sun. Uh, and they are describing, um, they are describing bodies that are recovered uh, as if they have been exsanguinated removed of magical essence. That <laughs> is the biggest clue that you get uh, from your um, query to the seed. So the signs point to Zim. They they point to uh, Elderbrin victims recovered on the banks of the river Zim leading to the Dolor Sea. Yeah. Do Elderbrun spawn like salmon? What? Do they return to where they were spawned? Do they spawn? I will tell you this. Um, Can I stop making say this say anything metaphor? else? <laughs> yeah. Say, say anything else, but if you want to uh, ask anybody anything, you can ask the person that just read an encyclopedia. Well, I don't know that that happens. Do I? I mean, we were walking and talking. No, you, you were, well, I think Maurice and, and Kiri were saying things that you found pretty boring. That's yeah, my guess. Like, I, I, I think Twig it has the attention span. I, Twig it focuses on alternately important things, I think is a better way to describe that. I'm not going to be disparaging against my own character. They they see important <laughs> shit all the time. Uh -huh. they're, inst they're a creature of instinct. Okay, make me an intellect roll. Uh, I will let you add your magical lore bonus to this. Oh, cool. Can he I did, say? mind you, hear Kiri read this entry to you, or at least tell you what was in this entry oh, earlier. Excellent. Um, can I potentially uh, use a point of hidden knowledge on this too? Absolutely. Cool. So that's, uh, this is magical lore plus, what does hidden knowledge get me? Uh, just an add another uh, Bene, to, or an add a plus one to your roll. Okay. Another plus one, I should say. Another plus one, so I'm sitting at with magical. That is that is a six total, unfortunately. All right, on a six total, and tell me where you think you gathered this bit of hidden knowledge. I think that this is uh, this wasn't something that uh, Twig accidentally scooped up. I, I think this was actually in something that Kiri accidentally scooped up when she purchased a bunch of uh, crappy Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. There was um, there was a, a, I think, a rather inspired, if not very good writer um, from The Silver had done an incredibly, incredible amount of research into subjects that did not matter at all to the narrative of the book, but wanted to shoehorn that in there anyways. All right. I will tell you this. What you understand from that is that there is a coastal encampment of the Elderbrin uh, that spans several miles uh, on the banks of the Dolor Sea, or the beaches of the Dolor Sea. Um, and that is where they ha they live in a relatively um, static encampment, which is unique to many of the denizens of the Golden Sun. I will also say that Gabrielle, one of the things that strikes you about those entries that you have um, ascertained and kind of like uh, 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 kind of interpreted from the seed is several of them are signed by uh, Karakson Clean, who has the same last name as Karaxia Clean, your former neighbor. Wow, that one away and i think just aloud is just definitely going to be well we need we need to head to the server and track it back what river zim x i m the river zim 
and he looks to the warden. What should we know about the River Zim? Always flowing. Its waters provide a means of metamorphosis and change, albeit minor. They also offer some of the residents, the more those residing here the longest, a affordance a bit of rebirth of powerful healing, but at a cost of losing something that they would rather leave behind. Unfortunately, my business, as always, is ever busy, ever changing, ever required here. I have already spent too much time for this meeting. It seems like you have an idea of what course of action to pursue next. I must go. Many are the needs of my people. Uh, be careful then. Someone, uh, we think the best pretend are going to kill you, like what, what said. If I die, then I die. If I die, then the world is changed, and that change is valuable. That's what I was, guys, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. There will always be a warden of change. Even if it isn't me. Who, uh, who makes wardens wardens? <laughs> And she just kind of chuckles and continues walking past you. My lady, Kiri calls after her. She have is... you ever borne a different name? A name like Titania? A fascinating question. Perhaps I was. In another life, in another time, another memory, another mind, another personality, something I've always worn. Thank you for giving me such food for thought. And she continues walking. So don't ask me how I know this, because it's complicated and I don't really want to explain the subtleties of a murder mystery romance plot. But there's like a big like community of Elderbrins on the sea, edge of the sea. Like a big one. And it stays there. That's who they're targeting. I mean, it's interesting insofar as, oh, why didn't I see it before? This book, what the, it came from the Vespertines library. It is a map of their thinking. The pages they have dog-eared are the ones that are important to them. It is a reflection, perhaps. A reflection of their intent. Hmm. Hey, uh, Cassia? Cass? Can I call you Cass? Um, sure. Yes. What? What's the best way to get to the banks of the River Zim on the Dolor Sea? Oh, um, well, and she, uh, kind of once again consults her flip uh her clipboard um well hmm we are only a few miles away from the, the nearest bank just south of uh, uh southeast of the house of secrets um perhaps uh you might travel there a, a matter of days uh, maybe a day or two if you're very uh expeditious um, and charter a uh, boat. I know there are many fishermen that fish out uh, items for uh, metamorphosis and change and uh, repurposing. And then you can just sail the river down. Anybody got any faster ideas? <laughs> oh, actually. Uh, and she uh, thinks to herself, there is a particular animal here uh, in the Golden Sun that's rather friendly, uh, depending on whether or not you have the right trick, and they have a bit of the gift of flight. Might be able to give you a, a means by getting there sooner. That. We like making friends. What's the trick? I saw that. It was rather, rather literal, and you know what? That's very clever. If I could give you points for puns, I would. Um, the trick... Now that's picking a feather, but why don't we discuss that very briefly? I've also got a lot of work to do, but um, 
Let me uh, see what I've got. And she uh, raises the clipboard in the air. And that is the point at which we are going to end tonight's session. As you have your heading, your way is clear. The clues are arraying themselves. And now the only thing left to do is to see what happens next. All right. So, guys, thanks so much for uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, I would like uh, everybody to do their character recaps. Gabrielle, Joy, Despair, character arcs? Um, no character arcs today, but definitely pretty good day. Like, we got shit done. Love that. Removing the needle. <laughs> Excellent. Take a Joy. Uh, and also uh, take one acumen for uh, piecing together uh, my Elderbrin puzzle. Uh, Maurice, joy, despair, acumen. This is a joy for sure. Um, uh, saved, well, helped Kiri get out of the mirror situation, and everybody's together and um, getting shit done, as as Marcy said. So yeah, that's a joy. Excellent. Uh, and then uh, I think take uh, one acumen for um, having the presence of mind to um, one, help Kiri, but also uh, two, uh, to also uh, fruitlessly assist um, uh, Twig in not making an ass of themselves in front of uh, the uh, Golden Warden. Uh, speaking of Twig, Twig, joy, despair, character arcs? Well, I haven't realized my ears are different. And... Uh which is going to be very funny le later. Um, <laughs> but Joy, this was good. This felt, this felt good. Awesome. I think, um, yeah, I think flexing that, like, like kind of letting, letting the magic kind of do what it wants to do and just kind of following that instinct, having that instinct, um, and the does and the will to not move, the 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 immovability of sense of self, um, that that's good. That's good stuff. We okay. we like that. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, take one joy, and then uh, yeah, take one acumen for uh, plumbing the depths of your Elderbrin knowledge from pulp novels. Um, finally, cheery joy, despair, character arcs. Uh, I think I'm the one that stops the uh, the joy train. I think Kiri takes a despair um, for a couple of reasons. I think predominantly among them is the sort of encroaching mirror virus. I think it is getting harder to hide what she is seeing and that a lot of what the party now is also seeing is connected to her in some way. Um, and I think she's realizing she's, <laughs> it's been escalated as it were, and she is coming up on a choice, um, maybe several choices. We shall see. Um, I think too, watching Gav successfully use the seed in front of the queen, um, again, sort of triggered a twinge, I think, of, of seeing that seed, seeing access to knowledge in use that way, uh, while she was very much on the sidelines of that. And I think that makes, I mean, Kiri hasn't fully come to terms with that herself. And so I think that twinged uh, the edge of despair there for her as well. Absolutely. And then uh, finally, uh, I was going to say, take uh, one despair, take uh, one acumen for uh, also uh, ascertaining all the information you could about the Elderbrin and making and connecting those dots. Uh, so now uh, let's do some shout outs and plugs. Marcy, shout out some plugs. Hello. Um, well, I'm just going to do my usual stuff. We've got so much more on this channel. Um, watch all of our shows. Um, but uh, starting th this coming Tuesday, uh, we will be starting up a new round of Flights of Fandom. We will be setting it in the Bioshock universe. And holy shit, I will be DMing for the very first time. <laughs> And I'm very nervous. So friends of this show, please come hang out in the chat. Um, you'll make me feel so much better about doing this crazy, stupid thing. Um, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, and, you know, June is just kind of a banger month for the channel. We're going to be introducing a brand new show in about two weeks. 
<laughs> um, for those of you that also still on the Flights of Fandom train, if you have been watching any of our past shows, you might have seen a reoccurring one for the last four times. Now we've been doing a show called Escape from Arkham, uh, where, you know, a few of us here, namely Hopper and myself, uh, play uh, hench people that are just trying to make their way on the streets of Gotham. And that is incidentally the name of the new shows, uh, Streets of Gotham. Uh, we'll be having more information trickling out over the next few weeks. And then our premiere date will be on Monday, June 20th uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then it will be airing every other Monday subsequently thereafter. Uh, so definitely join us for that. Uh, we're very excited to take this show into uh, a long form uh, series. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of good stuff. Uh, we're going to be announcing the fall and winter schedule for Flights of Fandom soon, probably by the end of the month. Stay tuned for that. Uh, and uh, other than that, that's that's it for me. I got to go prep now. <laughs> Excellent. Um, moving down the line, uh, Bill, shout out some plugs. Uh, would love to shout out you, Zach. Uh, we are in July coming up on three years of this stream and still uh, your description of Gav's uh, sniper rifle was just like pure joy for me. So still, still crazy after all these years, <laughs> uh, I would love to uh, take care of Hopper's usual shout out. So they have time to plug themselves. Uh, like the plug Jeff Stormer, party of one, uh, all my fantasy children, Yazeba's bed and breakfast and the uh, unofficial official Olive Garden LARP um gm jeff stormer uh great for all of your uh gaming needs I'd also like to plug uh martina da silva who made an original song for the stream martina da silva music.com um and finally cody johnston some more news the only news show out there um and that's it for me excellent uh hopper shout out some plugs um oh shout outs uh shout out to encounter party they're, they're they slap they're a DD actual play podcast that's edited they're rock good friends of the show um and uh ooh, self plugs um we premiered uh our, our on my channel i premiered our very first uh episode of his stream thanks in part to lar uh, episode of the dark vision stream which is me taking a home game of awful awful characters played by delightful people and we made it and put it and we took that home game and we put it on the internet and it went great so we're going to be doing that again uh in the near future if you want to hear see uh bill playing one of the most nightmarish characters i've ever run into like truly upsetting um then you, you should follow uh follow the legendary on uh, twitch and twitter and technically instagram awesome um but uh, also, uh, uh, shout out to Reagan for dying. Aw. Uh, finally, uh, Marissa, shout out some plugs. Yeah, um, I think most of the normal standbys are covered. Um, I will echo the shout out to come join us on the Bioshock Flights of Fandom starting on Tuesday, which I will also be in um, because I wrote my undergraduate thesis on Bioshock Infinite. And so, you know, returning to Rapture and Columbia or both, uh, I don't know, uh, will be a fun time indeed. So, and also come support Marcy because hooray, first time DMing. Um, yeah, and then I guess, uh, fulfilling Kiri's role uh, continually as player, I would like to plug uh, both William Shakespeare's uh, Midsummer Night's Dream and Ovid's Metamorphosis as literary extensions of the themes that you may have enjoyed in tonight's episode. Yes, and Marissa in the Golden just Star. gave you homework. <laughs> yeah, go check it out. Um, if you didn't see that initially, go, go look at it now. They're both great works of literature, so go read them. They're great. Excellent. You know we're gonna spoil the viewers, and now they're gonna they're gonna demand homework after every session, right? Uh, homework, reading lists, you know, further reading. I'm assuming you'll be doing this in the Bioshock stream at the end of each session. Absolutely. Cool. Yep. We'll Great. come up. You know, you'll have to stop me after probably. It'll be a good one training, these, DM training of, for you. One of these days, we will put on either my my own channel or this channel the fact that Marissa and I yearly do a replay. 
and talk philosophy through the entire Bioshock series. It's just something that we do, but I do think the world needs to see it. <laughs> I'm, I'm furiously coming up with the pun title for this, but go ahead. It's it's honestly, I just love, between that and Till Death Do Us Blart, I will listen to that every year. <laughs> um, the other thing uh, I will say for my own shout outs and plugs, one, uh, huge friends of the stream, uh, Angel Citadel, uh, absolutely uh, check out their stuff. I think they're on hiatus while uh, Josh and Joanne are getting settled again. Um, but uh, when they come back, you should definitely uh, check out their streams. They're super cool people and great friends of the stream. Uh, speaking of great streams, uh, Murfeather, uh, who has been, I think, uh, in the viewer list uh, uh, for us this uh, week, uh, has been doing a, um, uh, a charity stream of Bluebeard's Bride for Texas Fun Choice. Um, so, or I think it's fund Texas choice rather, pardon me. Um, so you should check them out and check out, uh, uh, the stream, uh, that they put on cause it's super cool. It's for a good, uh, 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 cause it's, uh, uh, feminist horror, which is, um, fantastic. Uh, had my own copy of that and, um, uh, it's great to see somebody actually playing it on stream. So, um, go check them out, uh, and support a good cause at the same time. And that's it for us, guys. Um, a lot uh, is going on in the world, as always. Uh, I wish there was a week where uh, an episode where I didn't feel like I needed to say that. Um, but here we are. Uh, so the most important thing is to do and to help however we can, whenever we can, even in the littlest ways. Um, most importantly, take care of yourselves. Uh, take care of your friends. Take care of the people that you love. Uh, and let them take care of you. And most importantly, I hope that the invisible sun shines on you all. Have a great night. It's Pride Month. Be extra gay and do extra crime. Extra gay, extra crime all the time.